Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. This video is a part 1 video of your topic 7.1 talking about acid and bases. And in this video, we are going to learn something very basic. When we talk about acid and bases, the first question will definitely be, how do I identify acid and bases? If I have a compound, how do I know that it's an acid? And how do I know that it's a base? The second thing in this video that we will look into is your conjugate acid-base pair. We are going to look at what is actually conjugate acid-base pair. Alright? So, first and foremost, let's jump straight into how do we identify acid and bases. We have two theories that we are going to use. The first one is your Arrhenius theory. The second is your bronsted lorry Both of them is used to identify which one is acid and which one is base by using a slightly different concept. Okay, let's see what the theory is talking about. The first and foremost, let's take a deep look into Arrhenius theory. In Arrhenius theory for acid, Arrhenius theory is saying that an acid is a species that will produce hydrogen ion, your H+, or your hydronium ion H3O+. Bear that in mind, H+, and H3O+, are actually represent the same thing. It's just when your H+, is in water, then it will become your H3O+. Okay, so H+, and also H3O+, over here, represent the same thing. Okay, and that is how Arrhenius identify acid. Okay, how about base? How do Arrhenius theory identify a base? Simple. Arrhenius theory stated that if a species produces hydroxide ion, if a species dissolve in water and then produce OH minus, then it is a base. And that is how Arrhenius theory identify your acid and also your base. In the acid, Arrhenius theory saying that we need the H plus or H3O plus. Well, for the base, we need to produce OH minus. Bear that in mind, both of the acid and base must dissolve in water. That's why, if you look at the equation that I give to you over here, for the acid, everything is in aqueous. And over here, aqueous represent the presence of water. Okay? And as you can see, for the acid, we need to have the presence of H plus and also H3O plus. And you can see over here, your HNO3 is an acid because when I dissolve in water, I produce H+. Your HCN will then produce H+, as well. And your HCl plus H2O will also produce your H3O+. Okay? That's why all of them is an acid over here because they're able to produce H plus ion or H3O plus ion. Simple. And next, you have your potassium hydroxide, KOH, and also your barium hydroxide, BaOH2. And when you dissolve both of them in water, you realize that in your water, you form your OH- species. So when you form your OH- species, both of them over here will then be categorized as your base according to Arrhenius theory. Okay, next question over here will be, how about NH3? We know that NH3 is also a base. But if you look at NH3 over here, NH3 is not holding any OH- like your KOH or your barium hydroxide. So why or how do we categorize ammonia over here, NH3, as your base? Simple. That is where your Bronsted lorry comes in. Okay? So, what did bronsted lorry theory talk about acid and bases? For the acid in bronsted lorry it's saying that it's a species that will donate a proton. So, what is actually a proton over here? A proton that we mean is actually a H+. So, what did bronsted lorry theory saying over here is, acid is the one that will remove a H+. Alright? It can definitely remove more than one H+. So, acid is a species that will remove H+. And the H+, over here, represented by the word proton. Okay? How about base? How do we identify a base? A base is a species that will accept a proton. Guys, can you see that? 
So, Bronsted lorry is now using the word proton, okay? Just now in your Arrhenius theory, we are using the H plus and the OH minus. While in the Bronsted lorry, we are using the word proton. And we know that the word proton represents H plus. So, in bronsted lorry theory, a base is a species that will accept or we are going to add in a H plus. Definitely, we can take in more than one H plus, okay? So, base is a species that will accept H plus, all right? Looking at this equation given, first and foremost, let's us pair them up, the before and after. So, before is your ammonia, NH3. The after is your NH4+. That is my before and after, okay? While your H2O over here, before is a H2O, after is a OH-. minus. Can you see that? Then next, we look at the differences or we look at the changes that happen after the reaction. Your NH3 become NH4+. Plus. In the other words, your NH3 actually accepted a H+. Plus. Can you see that? Your NH3 accepted the H plus to become NH4 plus, right? Therefore, when the NH3 accepted the H plus, accept H plus, therefore, your NH3 will become a base. Can you see that? All right? Vice versa, look at the differences between the water and also the product. So the water H2O become the OH minus product. So from the H2O become OH minus, over here, your H2O remove a H plus. Can you see that? So when your H2O remove a H plus, remove proton, that means your H2O right now is a acid. Can you see that? So that is how we identify a base by looking at the changes before and after. Same goes to your acid. That is how we identify your water is an acid over here because your water remove a H+. Therefore, in this case, your water is an acid. Okay? Bear that in mind, your water is an amphoteric species. When your water is an amphoteric species, your water can become acid and your water can become a base depends on the condition. Alright? Let's try another example. So the same thing, the first step is to find the partner. So the partner of HNO2 is your NO2 minus. Okay, that is my partner for the first pair. I find the partner. And obviously, the next pair will be between your PO4 3 minus and also your HPO4 2 minus. Okay, and as always, look at the differences. So from HNO2, we become NO2 minus. So what happened is we remove H plus to form the product, right? So when your HNO2 remove H plus, your HNO2 will then become an acid. Why an acid? Because acid is the species that will donate the proton. Therefore, HNO2 is an acid. Make sense? Simple. And vice versa, when you have an acid, basically, we already know your PO4 3 minus is a base. But to double confirm, we need to make sure a base is a species that will accept a proton, where in this case, a proton is H+. So let's take a quick look. Your PO4 3 minus becoming a HPO4 2 minus. So, the differences before and after is accepted a H+. Plus. And when we say accepted a H+, plus, straight away, your PO4 3 minus is a base. Can you see that? Very simple. Just make sure you find the correct partner, look at the differences, compare the differences, then you will be able to identify who is your acid and who is the base. All right? So, as a conclusion, Arrhenius theory is using the word hydrogen ion H plus or H3O plus over here to identify an acid. While for the base, Arrhenius theory is using OH minus. Okay?
Well, for the Bronsted Lorry theory, for the acid Bronsted Lorry saying that it's a species that donate proton. So over here we are using the word proton, which represent H plus. So in the Bronsted Lorry theory, we are actually discussing about donating or accepting a proton. And obviously, a proton over here represents H plus as always. Okay, so this is how these two different theories are used to identify acid and base. They are using a different theory, a different term, a different method. But the purpose of both theories are the same. We want to identify who is acid and who is base. All right, simple. Let's move to the next thing. What is actually conjugate? Acid base pairs. What is actually this thing stand for? Very, very simple. So we are going to identify who is your conjugate acid and we are going to identify who is the conjugate base. And we can identify both of this easily if you already know who is the acid and who is the base by using your Ahinis theory or your Bronsted Lorry theory just now. So once you know who is the acid and who is the base, you can easily know who is your conjugate, all right? So the first one is your acid and your conjugate base. You can see over here, your acid will donate a H plus and then will form a conjugate base. What is this sentence means? I have an acid and the acid will become a conjugate base as a product when we remove a H plus from the acid. So bear that in mind, acid will always be the one that removes the proton, right? So once the acid removes the proton, the product that we form from the acid is what we call conjugate base. That's it. Simple. So bear that in mind, acid will produce conjugate base. How about base? What do you think base will produce? Vice versa of this. Base will then produce conjugate acid. So how do base produce conjugate acid? Simple. Base will definitely be accepting the proton. So when you have a base, the base will produce a conjugate acid. So the question is, how do a base produce a conjugate acid? Simple. We add in H+. So when the base taking in a H+, the product that produced from the base is your conjugate acid. Can you see the difference right now? The pairing? That's why it becomes a conjugate acid base pair. Because the acid will produce your conjugate base. While your base will produce your conjugate acid. Alright? Very simple. So back to the root is you need to know who is your acid and who is your base. And from that, you will know who is your conjugate acid. And who is your conjugate base? All right, simple. So by looking at the same example just now, knowing that we need to find the partner first. So that is my HNO2. The partner, obviously, NO2 over here, right? So this is my partner. Well, next is your PO4 3 minus, and the partner is your HPO4 2 minus. So that will be my second partner. Can you see that? The second pairing. So, obviously, look at the example that I give to you. When your HNO2 is an acid, the pairing will be a conjugate base. Can you see that? Alright? And when your PO4 3 minus is a base, the pairing will be a conjugate acid. And always remember why this thing become an acid. Your HNO2 become an acid because your HNO2 donate a H+. Alright, your HNO2 release a H+, plus, a proton. So when it release this H+, plus, it become NO2 minus. That's why it become your conjugate base, your acid conjugate base. While your PO3 minus become a base. Why it become a base? Because it accepted a proton. So when it accept a proton, it become HPO4 minus. Can you see the proton over here? So, when it accepts a H+, plus, it becomes a base. When it is a base, automatically the product will be a conjugate acid. Simple. See that? So, a base 
will produce a conjugate acid and the acid will produce a conjugate base. Simple. Let's try another example over here. First and foremost, find the pairing. I have HBr. So the pairing, Br minus. That is my first pair. Done. And obviously, the second pair is quite obvious, whatever that left. You have your ammonia, NH3, and the pairing, obviously, NH4+. plus. So that is my second pair. Done. So before we identify the conjugate acid and conjugate base, you need to identify who is the acid and who is the base. So looking at the differences, I have HBr, guys. It's a HBr. And then it become a Br minus. In the other words, I donated a proton. Agree? So when I donate a proton, that means it will become an acid. So your HBr will then become an acid. When your HBr is an acid, guys, what about the product? What Br minus would be? Br minus automatically will be a conjugate base. Can you see that right now? Easy. Okay. So your HBr is an acid. Your Br minus, the product, will definitely be the conjugate base. And this is what we call conjugate acid-base pairs. All right. And the vice versa of it, when your HBr is an acid, I definitely know my NH3 is a base. Straight away, definitely a base. And we can cross-check that by looking at the proton. So I have NH3 becoming NH4+. Plus. So NH3 become NH4+. Plus. I accepted a H+. Plus. So when I accept a H+, plus, guys, ammonia is a base. Prove it. So when ammonia is a base, what would be the pairing? What would NH4 plus be? NH4 plus automatically will be your conjugate acid. Can you see that? Very simple. So conjugate acid base pair are related with who is your acid and who is your base. Therefore, it's very important to get the acid and base correct before finding the conjugate acid base pair. All right? Simple. So next, let's look at the strength between the acid and the conjugate base. They are inversely proportional. The stronger the acid, the weaker your conjugate base will be. Okay? So in the other words, if I have a strong acid used in your reaction and the product that you produce will be a weak conjugate base, all right, that is what I mean by the strength. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. And definitely vice versa. If I'm having a weak acid, all right, the conjugate that you form will be strong. So if I'm having a weak acid, I will then form a strong conjugate base. All right, simple. And what do you think happened to the relationship or the strength between the base and the conjugate acid? Same thing. All right, the base and the conjugate acid will be the same as your acid and conjugate base. The stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate, okay? So the base and also the conjugate are inversely proportional. Make sense? So the stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate acid. The weaker the base, the stronger the conjugate acid. They are inversely proportional. Okay, so let's take a quick look on this conjugate acid base pair. So we know that your ammonia over here is a weak base. All right, everybody should know ammonia is a weak base. Well, your HCl is a strong acid. Okay, so since it's a weak base over here, what do you think the partner will be? The weak base will definitely form a strong conjugate acid. Alright, why I know it's a strong conjugate acid? Because it's coming from a weak base. Can you see that? And the vice versa for HCl. When it's a HCl, obviously the pairing is a Cl minus. Agree? And we know that everybody knows that HCl is a strong acid. So what happened when HCl is a strong acid? 
your CL minus will become a weak conjugate base. All right. So the strength of the acid and the conjugate base, and also the base with the conjugate acid, their strength are inversely proportional. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate. The stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate. All right. And that's it about this video. So I hope at the end of this video, you're able to identify who is your acid and who is your base, and also have the ability to identify the conjugate acid base pair. And if you have any question regarding acid and base, drop it in the comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, and make sure you have liked the video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next video. Pocket.com.